Here's everything you might have missed in the first look at Amazon's Lord of the Rings series. While Amazon's billion dollar Lord of the Rings series may hold the title of the most expensive television show in history, it's still technically without a proper title. And while I'm sure it'll likely be called Lord of the Rings The Second Age or Middle Earth The College Years, many fans are divided over what exactly it should be called. Case in point, just ask Elijah Wood. And for more on that, check out our previous episode of Nerdist News, which I will link to in the description below. But the one thing this series does have, the one thing to rule them all, is a first look at what the series will actually look like. And holy potatoes, is it gorgeous! Okay, I lied, there are actually two things. It also has a release date that's no longer secret or safe. Now, the TBD LOTR series will premiere in more than 240 countries and territories worldwide on Friday, September 2nd, 2022. <coughs> I know, I know, you thought I was gonna say 2021 this year for a second, but no, we gotta wait. We have to wait a very long time. And every day was as long as a life age of the Earth. Now we're gonna break down everything that you need to know about this first look in just a moment, but before that, let's establish what we already know about this highly anticipated series. And while all of this is speculation for the time being based on existing lore and what we can glean from the image, if you prefer to go into this show unspoiled, leave now before you turn into a total Bilbo. <laughs> All right, let's get into it, shall we? According to a press release, the new epic drama brings to screens for the very first time J.R.R. Tolkien's fabled second age of Middle-earth's history. Beginning in a time of relative peace, thousands of years before the events of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings books, the series follows an ensemble cast of characters, both familiar and new, as they confront the long-feared re-emergence of evil to Middle-earth. Now, the key phrase in there is J.R.R. Tolkien's fabled second age of Middle-earth's history. Because as many Hobbit heads are quick to point out, this image seemingly depicts the first age of Middle-earth's history. We see a mysterious figure clad in white standing in a verdant field in front of a stunning vista featuring forests, mountains, a gorgeous city, and if you look closely, golden light emanating through the clouds over a pair of trees. And while this is just what the natural splendor of New Zealand looks like on an everyday basis, this isn't just a random landscape. It is most likely an image of the city of Valmar, the city of bells, located in Valinor, the undying lands of the elves, which we saw the elves and the ring bearers departing for in the Lord of the Rings movies. Valmar is a particularly significant location because it's the dwelling place of the Valar, the powerful beings molded by Eru Iluvatar, the supreme deity of Middle-earth. The Valar lived in Valmar, I mean, it's right there in the title, with their servant, the Maiar, lesser but still immensely powerful beings, including people like Myron, better known to you and me later, as Sauron. Again, just look for the Ron, you, you guys get it. More on that in just a moment, though. The two trees in the background are Laurelin, the gold tree, and Telperion, the silver tree, which served as the sources of light for Middle-earth. They're undeniably beautiful, but unfortunately they were destroyed by the Dark Lord Melkor, aka Morgoth, and Shelob's mom, the massive murder spider Ungoliant during the First Age. So why would we be seeing this idyllic scene during a series set during the Second Age of Middle-earth? Well, the answer is simple. It's a flashback to a time long past. Much like the Fellowship of the Rings begins with the important expository table setting of the Siege of Barad-dûr in which Isildur absconds with the One Ring, this series will likely begin by showing us how the Paradise of Valinor was corrupted by that evil whose long-feared re-emergence will drive the events of this series. Most likely, this is from an extended prologue sequence during the first episode of the show, which will set the stage for what's to come. Now, for those who don't know, long before Sauron, there was another darker, eviler lord named Morgoth and or Melkor. Morgoth was the most powerful of the Ainur, the powerful primordial beings created by Eru Iluvatar, the supreme being that created the world as we know it. And as mentioned above, Morgoth woke up one day and chose violence, rebelling against his creator and becoming the source of almost all evil in the world. Now, perhaps with that said, that mystery man standing in the foreground could be Melkor, and this could be the darkening of Valinor as depicted in the Silmarillion. You know, it's a real top 10 anime betrayals meets images taken moments before disaster moment. In the Silmarillion, Tolkien wrote, Melkor looked north and saw afar the shining plain and the silver domes of Valmar gleaming in the mingling of the lights of Telperion and Laurelin. Then Melkor laughed aloud and leapt swiftly down the long western slopes and Ungoliant was at his side and her darkness covered them. Consider the following. The series takes place thousands of years before the events of both The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. And we know that Amazon is already committed to at least five seasons, so they're not gonna simply walk us into Mordor, they're gonna take us back to the root of all evil in Middle-earth with one of the most significant events in the lore period. 
With that said, although we could be seeing Melkor slash Morgoth in prologue form, I am still firmly in the camp that the long-feared re-emergence of evil is going to revolve around a young Sauron and his rise to power as the second Dark Lord of Middle-earth. The series could potentially include Sauron arriving in Mordor, creating the Rings of Power, the emergence of the Ringwraiths, and witnessing how Sauron brought ruin to the once great island kingdom of Numenor, a kingdom of men that emerged from the sea during the Second Age as a gift from the gods. The Sauron-Numenor saga is fraught, to say the least. I mean, case in point, when King Arpharazon brings a willingly captured Sauron to Numenor, Sauron corrupts the Numenorians, making them worship Morgoth instead of the Valar by promising them eternal life. And before you know it, there's a 500 foot tall temple to Morgoth where they regularly offered human sacrifices to the Dark Lord, like you do. And this corruption of the Numenorians in turn leads to an invasion of the Undying Land so they can attack the Valar, which in turn leads Eru Iluvatar to destroy the island, sending them to a watery grave a la Atlantis. So, you know, it's at least as exciting as an 111st birthday party. Yeah. Happy birthday! But honestly, who knows? We could be wrong. That could just be a random ass elf on his way to go look at some fine ass trees in a beautiful city. And that city could be Tyrion or maybe we're on the island of Tall Eresia instead. Only time will tell and we'll have plenty of time to overthink every last detail about the Lord of the Rings series while we wait the year and change until it premieres on Amazon Prime Video. In the meantime, though, we'll always have the Lord of the Rings, the War of the Rohirrim anime film to look forward to, and we also have deep dives into Sauron, Numenor, and the Second Age of Middle-earth just waiting for you over on Nerdist.com. For now, though, tell us, what do you think of this first look at Amazon's Lord of the Rings series? Who do you think that mystery figure really is, and what do you hope to see from the show? I want to see mountains again. Mountains, Gandalf. Let me know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.